Good Sunday evening, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. After a very hectic Saturday night, things are a lot calmer than what they were just about 24 hours ago. And again, continuing to see there is a potential for some more areas of severe weather as we go into this next week. Not immediately, but again, we're going to be seeing that potential as we get into about Tuesday or Wednesday from what it looks like right now. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit more tonight again about what happened yesterday. We've got a lot of links already posted on social media. We'll show you more about what the National Weather Service in Memphis has found out through their damage surveys and also how you can participate in what happened and lend your participation to what's called citizen science. You don't have to have a PhD to participate in scientific studies like what the National Weather Service does. A lot of what they do is for insurance purposes and for safety, but a lot of what they do, the data they collect goes back to science and other meteorologists, pictures and reports and things of that nature that you can provide can help make houses safer. We can make alerts more accurate. We can do a whole bunch of stuff like that. And we'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. If you're just joining us, maybe you've never been here before, welcome to Weather Overtime. This is our online video weather blog, current magazine format, kind of laid out again for you to see a little bit more about what's going on here in the Mid-South. If you got questions, drop them into the comments section. Your forecast scrolling for the Mid-South area around around East Arkansas, West Tennessee, and North Mississippi in the blue bar down here. Also, you can catch the seven-day forecast here or look up more information and the storm sur survey reports from the National Weather Service are right here at wreg.com slash weather, just right above the forecast information. Also, if there's something here you'd like to see, drop me a line at austin.onic at wreg.com. We would love to have you along for the ride. So if there's something here you'd like to see, let me know, and we'll try to include that when we're able to do so. Let's go ahead and get started and show you a little bit more about what's going on around the Mid-South. A few speckles of rain still left on the camera lens at the Crosby Hall construction cam looking at the Student Union at Ole Miss for tonight. Pretty crowded parking lot and kind of wet roadways out there, but the rain has been leaving North Mississippi. We'll show you Storm Tracker 3S coming up here in just a little bit. What are the severe weather chances for North Mississippi later this week? Stephanie Hicks Mills, we'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. Ready for some dry and warmer weather. Jay Kiesler, yes, I think we're all ready for that. Kaiser, Arkansas, Nancy Davis Coley, hope you were safe from last night's storms. And Todd Barbie, any rain tomorrow? We'll talk about that uh, coming up. Michael Thomas, welcome to you as well. Here's what it looks like across the area. Live picture from I-40 and Witten Road. I-40 traffic between here and Appling moving along pretty well. Low cloud ceilings, but hopefully those are going to be kind of drifting away later on tonight as we see less clouds and more sunshine for tomorrow, but we still have that small possibility of maybe some more rainfall coming our way. Downtown Memphis looking decently quiet. I-40 traffic on the Hernando de Soto Bridge moving across either direction, moving along pretty well at this point in time. Drop your locations and your weather reports if you've got them. Rain gauge information, we'd love to see that. Temperatures, wind speeds, if you've got that weather station for Christmas and the holidays and it's working, give us a wind report. Say what the wind or the wind speed and wind direction are doing. We'd love to see that. Drop those into the comments section as we go along. Currently, one of our brand new cameras at Shelby Farms Park out toward Walnut Grove. Traffic on Walnut Grove moving along pretty well and looking back over to around the area of Farm Road and back toward Mullen Stations. Uh, Mullen Station Road looking pretty good. And again, low cloud cover, a lot of sky shine here looking at the underside of the clouds. Not much in the way of rainfall left at this time, but there is going to be that potential of some light amounts of rain throughout the rest of the evening, and mainly along and south down to North Mississippi. Maybe at times you can see some of that rainfall straying into the Tennessee, Tennessee area of the Tennessee River, but beyond that, we're just not really looking at much at this point, even down to around, say, uh, Oxford into that area. Again, a few speckles on the Crosby Hall construction cam, and some light scattered showers reappearing just west of I-55 from Batesville down to Charleston and just to the east of Clarksdale. So there may be some more scattered sprinkles out there, and those are stretching over toward Tupelo. Those are going to continue to make their way back toward the east, but we're just not seeing too much of anything right now. Heaviest activity between Houston and Tupelo in North Mississippi, and that's going to be West Alabama's problem here coming up here in just a little bit. As of right now, again, temperatures pretty mild, actually. We're not seeing a lot of problems out there, mid to upper 40s to lower 50s, and most of this has been from 
way early this morning, right after the tornado warnings. The numerous tornado warnings we had are all over with. So a few scattered showers out there, but outside of that, at least we got some sunshine across the Mid-South to kind of ring things out by just a little bit. So that may help again for just a little while at this time. Let's see, Jammy, loving my life, Houston. We are flooded out in some areas of Marks, Mississippi. I hope you get dried out at some point in time at this point in time. Little Cool from Westwood, Deborah Hearns, thank you very much. Uh, Kenneth Sims, do we know what the tornado in Union City was? Uh, we'll talk about the damage surveys coming up here in just a little bit and where you can get more information on that, so stick around for more there. Let's see, 1.5 inches of rain, Joyce Johnson Berry from Crenshaw, thank you very much uh, for that one, and good evening to everybody else checking in from tonight, Ellen Goff in Dyer County, Tennessee. What we've got, again, running the numbers into the rest of the evening, we could see a few sprinkles dropping around areas around I-40 close to the metro. As you notice, the green area right here could be a bit of a problem. And parts of West Tennessee, I would not rule out a possible drizzle here and there, but mostly the rain is going to be slowly peeling away from us emphasis on the word slowly. By the time we go past midnight, we still have that area of rainfall. Heaviest back around northeast Mississippi, Corinth, Tishomingo County, northwest Alabama. We'll probably see more of that coming up here into and around the area. Early in the morning, most again, of the rainfall leaves the area, but by News Channel 3 daybreak tomorrow, we just might see a few sprinkles sticking around east of Oxford, south of Corinth, and into around northern Mississippi. The gray colors you see here, that's cloud cover, so not everybody's going to have a sunny morning, but as we go into tomorrow afternoon, most of that should disappear as some drier air comes in out of the northeast. Pretty mild tomorrow, too, looking pretty nice. Temperatures right about the upper 50s to lower 60s. If we get enough sunshine, I think this right here is a little bit eager for the computer, but it's interpreting more sunshine as more heat and therefore higher temperature. I'm going to say the upper 50s to right around 60 degrees or so, but most of the area should be drying out for a little bit, and at least we catch a bit of a break from the rainfall into the Mid-South. Vince Tetwan from Topeka West High School, one of my uh, friends from back in Topeka from around Kansas City. Welcome to the show tonight. Good to see you around for this evening, Mr. Vince. Thank you very much. Brian Clark from Senatobia for tonight. Thanks for joining us here. Uh, C.J. Cryer, Cassadine, Tennessee is tired of it. I'm assuming you're referring to the rainfall at this time. Yeah, we could catch a bit of a break uh, at this point in time. Amy Autry, Skywarn Spotters class from Madison County last year. Glad you took that too, especially with that one storm that popped up right around Jackson to the east of there last night. That was a decently powerful but very tiny storm, and that could have caused a lot more problems out there for the, the area. Now into tomorrow morning, again, Monday night into Tuesday morning, we're just not seeing a lot out there. Now toward about Tuesday night into Wednesday. It's not on the maps yet. We can't really show you what the forecast here, but again, the Storm Prediction Center, the forecast goes three days out. So that's tonight, tomorrow, and Tuesday. But as we go into around portions of the area, as we head into around Tuesday night, into this area here, it seems a little specific, but this is where the National Weather Service in Memphis says the possibilities exist. And looking at the computer models, I tend to agree on this, that northwest Mississippi, southeast Arkansas, mainly south of the metro area, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, and again across the area through Wednesday, this could be the spot for the possibility of some more severe weather. Now, again, there's no forecast yet. We have to wait until tomorrow before that three-day forecast comes out showing uh, what happens late Tuesday, and that'll happen at about midnight and afterwards tonight. So hopefully if I'm up late enough, we'll post that for you on social media so you can get more information about that. But in the meantime, no severe weather tonight, none tomorrow, and none through Tuesday. But Tuesday night into around Wednesday, this could be the area for a target zone for more severe weather. A little too early to tell right now what we're getting, but once again, it's definitely need to pay attention to more on that for right now. Paulette Morrow, cooler tonight, 48 and calm in New Bern, Tennessee. Glad to hear a little bit more about that. Jennifer Lynn Ross in all caps, no more rain for a month, please God. Spells it out quite nicely right there. I'm sure a lot of people uh, feel a little bit more about that. Cool in Vosburg, Mississippi. Susan Cooley, thank you very much uh, for that one. And from Deer Park, Texas, welcome to the show, Paula Alberson. Thank you uh, very much at this point in time. Let's take a look and see what's going on again into tomorrow morning. There could be another problem with fog. And if you're going to be doing anything outdoors again early tomorrow morning, we could be looking at some lower visibilities. 
Doesn't look like enough for a dense fog advisory, but I would leave a little earlier tomorrow because of that, if it does seem foggy, because you need to have that visibility out there and not be rushing around when that fog happens. Now, some of that's going to be rainfall. I think we may linger a few showers too around sunrise, but the rest of the day should be breaking up the clouds, mid to upper 50s to lower 60s, somewhere in there, but um, if we have enough clouds, if these things stick around for a while, these numbers will be a lot cooler into the rest of the day. So this is something that we uh, could see in just a little bit. Dave Sharp across the river, welcome from Arkansas, and Dorothy Womack, hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, thanks a lot for stopping on by, and thanks to everybody else who's tuning in for tonight. Uh, thanks to everybody who's watching. Just fine, no power. Uh, you take your weather seriously after last night. Nancy Davis Coley. Well, Thank you very much on that. I do appreciate that. Into Tuesday, rising the temperatures up into the lower 70s will increase the clouds as we go toward Tuesday evening. And again, that's where we start to see late Tuesday night and into most of Wednesday. Unfortunately, we've got more rain, thunderstorms, and some of these, again, could be the potential of some severe weather in the Mid-South. We're going to be watching this, again, with a lot of interest. Remember, at this time of the year, from anywhere between, say, about late January all the way through about early May, this area can get both, again, winter weather early on and pretty good storms out there before we hit that sort of summertime lull between about April and around October. So this is the time of the year we really need to watch out for possibilities like this. So please keep it tuned to News Channel 3. And as who was that up there just a little while ago? Uh, Amy Autry taking the Skywarn Spotter class. Please consider taking one of those. We'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit as well. 50 degrees in Walls, Mississippi. Jeffrey Griffiths, thank you very much uh, for tuning in. And Iris Buckley from Somerville, thank you very much as well. Some of those showers and thunderstorms could linger again until Thursday morning, uh, hopefully clearing off for the rest of the day and a little cooler as well by the time we hit Friday morning. Mid to upper 50s there, lower 60s into Saturday and Sunday. Now, getting into the first weekend of March and the first full week of March, you're not noticing too much in here. I think we're kind of turning the corner. I don't think we're entirely there yet, but again, later on this week, 1st of March is what is called meteorological springs. That's the season that begins as record keeping for spring begins. It's the month itself, not the date where spring turns over, that we start watching for signs of spring out there. And I think we're getting close to that for right now when it comes to the seasons changing over. But we can still get some pretty good winter weather at this time of the year. Not showing up here. Coolest numbers we can see are going to be, again, the first full week of March mid to upper 30s or so for low temperatures and another chance of rain coming in by next Tuesday. But after we get rid of the rain on Thursday, looks like a pretty good spate of days coming up to where we don't get much of anything whatsoever coming our direction. So at least we can, after this anyway, here, we can dry out again by just a little bit at this time. Ray Lott, where or when are the Skywarn classes going to be held? Uh, if you'd like to know more about that, you can go to this website, wrag.com slash weather. Scroll down beneath the forecast and you'll find more information about that. Or you can go to the National Weather Service in Memphis. All you have to do is go to weather.go weather.gov and then when you get the great big United States map up there click on the Mid-South area and that'll take you directly to the National Weather Service and at the top of the screen you'll see the Skywarn training headlines click on that and you can find out more about the meetings on that coming up a little bit later on all right well I was hoping this was going to be a little bit easily more visible but again if this is a little bit too bright let me see if I can change that by just a little bit here uh, Okay, that's, well, wasn't quite what I was hoping for, unfortunately. Okay, hang on just one second here. All right, well, it's a little bit on the bright side, I think. Can we see if we shelter that a little bit? Okay, National Weather Service, again, it's kind of hard to see for right here. The Mississippi River, kind of visible, almost visible for right here. And then I-55, the dark line here. Kaiser here, Osceola here, and Luxor here. Uh, information from the National Weather Service uh, showing again the storm survey information that they have from Kaiser, Arkansas and Mississippi County from yesterday. EF1 tornado, which is winds of about 90 miles per hour from a tornado that occurred Saturday. So that was right there, if you can just barely see that light blue color on that very light yellow background. 
Uh, we'll be posting more about this on our web pages and keeping you updated on that. But that was the tornado track from last night that damaged the church in Kaiser, the hotel and the houses in Osceola, and then lifted up right close to the Luxora area, right along the Mississippi River. And again, if you'd like to see more about this, all you have to do is go to wrag.com slash weather. Now, the really neat thing is that you can get a lot of great information from the National Weather Service, and it's very easy to do so. Again, you can go to the National Weather Service website at weather.gov, click on the Mid-South, and you'll get to the National Weather Service in Memphis. Then all you have to do is go to the current hazards area, and right back over here, you can see a little bit more about the submit a storm report or submit a storm photo. Now, it doesn't sound like much, but your information that you provide, whether it's damage to a home or a stop sign or a report of what actually happened, all that information gathered from all over the Mid-South where something goes on, the more information we have, the better we can study the effects of storms. And it's really neat to be able to participate in this. And if you would like to do that, all you have to do is just go to this web page and drop the information to them, and they'll include that in their damage survey. So you can help take part in this. It's called citizen science. You at home, you don't have to have a college degree, a PhD, anything like that. You can help out. And if you'd like to do so, please consider sending the information uh, to the National Weather Service. Now, uh, Mr. Ray Lott, where are the Skywarn classes going to be held? If you click right up here at the top of the screen, want to become a storm spotter, training classes coming, and all you have to do is just click right there and you'll get the spotter training schedule, which will show you again a little bit more as to what's coming up. Uh, unfortunately, the Phillips County one in West Helena, Arkansas had to be rescheduled. That'll be the 26th. It looks like that's uh, going on tomorrow, but if it's going to be rescheduled, we'll have to monitor this page to see what happens. Next one after that is Tuesday, Camden, Tennessee, Benton County, Tennessee at the Camden Central High School. The 1st of March, later on this week, at Cross County High School or Cross County Wind Fire Department in Wynn, Arkansas. And right after that, Crittenden County. Arkansas State University Mid-South in West Memphis, Arkansas at 6.30 p.m. And there's about another, say, Baker's dozen of these coming up within the course of the next several days and weeks. So if you have the opportunity to attend these courses, you show up, you take the course. It's about an hour and a half total. It depends on how many questions are asked. A uh, great place for kids about eight or nine years old or older if they have interest in science. It really does. These classes really do, again, give the kids a little bit more of a handle on what seems to be an uncontrollable situation. If you're ready to go for severe weather before it happens, you're really going to be able to reduce the amount of anxiety. That's not only true of just kids, that's true of adults too. So if this is something that concerns you, if you're scared of severe weather, this is a great course to take. It's totally free. It's paid for by your tax dollars and my tax dollars. So this is, again, you just show up and take the course. And I urge everybody out there to get more information about this. And please consider uh, taking, again, more information about this course out there. You don't have to be a scientific genius for this. Again, you just have to be a citizen willing to participate. It's a really great opportunity for everybody, no matter who you are or where you are, to pick up more information about what's going on with the weather. And I urge everyone to do so because the more people we have that learn this information and can call it into the National Weather Service, they can broadcast the information just like last night, and we can tell people ahead of time what's going to be going on. So thank you again very much uh, on this. Amy Autry, M. Ping, yes, that's a very good program to have around to uh, report from the National Severe Storms Laboratory. Very good to have that. Grady Bennett, 40, what is that, 48 in Burr Thank you very much, and thank you uh, for the very uh, nice words there as well. All right, let's switch gears really quick. I'm going to wrap things up here in a second. Angie D569 didn't get a location with this, but a beautiful sunset from tonight. Looks like on the interstate someplace. Uh, not too sure where, but thank you, Miss Angie, uh, for that one. Jen09098, thank you for a great sunset from St. Anne Catholic Church in and around Bartlett. Beautiful sky there. And from former News Channel 3 photojournalist, now working for Bill Dance Outdoors in Collierville, Mr. Dan Patton. Thank you very much for a great one from Huntington, Tennessee. Uh, again, some absolutely incredible sky on fire pictures out there for tonight. If you've got pictures, we'd love to feature them on social media, but we can't show them unless you send them. You 
kind of see the problem we're working with here. So send them to me, tweet them to me at aonic underscore WRAG3, also on aonic no underscore necessary WRAG3 on Instagram and on Facebook, Austin Onic WREG. We're glad to have you along there. More on my forecast available throughout the rest of the weekend on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network stations, and I'll be back on with Bob and Josh tomorrow. Monday through Friday mornings at 8 to 10 a.m. If you'd like to catch both my weather forecast from the News Channel 3 Weather Center and a little bit more about some great sports chat and apparently another pretty explosive interview of some sort. Something's happening coming up on Tuesday. So if you would like to tune in for that, AM 730 in the Memphis metro area or if you're outside the signal range, talkbacklivenetwork.org. And, of course, please tune in tomorrow morning for weather expert Todd Demers and more on his forecast early on daybreak. That starts at 4.30 a.m. Got to wrap things up. Going to go over to my webpage, to my own Facebook page here in just a little bit at about 8.33 or so to update everybody there. So if you've got any more questions or if you'd like to see more about weather where the troops are, if you'd like to see a little bit more about what's going on with weather overseas. We'll have that as kind of our little salute to everybody wearing uh, the uniform out there. And again, thanks to everybody for serving our country in the way that you do out that direction. So we'll have more about that coming up just past 8.30 tonight. Got any questions? Again, please email me at austin.onic at wreg.com. Kristen Holloway will be on with the news tonight. Mike Sadie will be on with sports tonight. Not like they were last night because I was the one doing all the talking. So if you'd like to know more about what's going on in the Mid-South, please join us for News Channel 3 at 10. We'll get you ready to go as you go into the work and or school week. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, thanks to everybody for joining us tonight and stick around for a lot more with News Channel 3 on air and online.